in pre hispanic times the valley of mexico held five lakes and extensive wetlands fed by an abundance of pure water from the mountains in rainy seasons the lakes join to form the lake of the moon the great civilizations of this rich valley controlled most of mexico and central america beginning with the teotihuacan empire more than two thousand years ago it was then before the birth of christ that the first chinampas were made the ancient people of the valley of mexico layered strips of water weeds and rich mud to make rectangular islands surrounded by canals each island was called a chinampa crops were planted and one of the world's most productive forms of agriculture was born the Aztecs, a small, poor tribe, arrived in the valley in the 14th century. They adopted the Chinampa system, already in use by resident tribes, and expanded it. They created land by reclaiming the wetlands for their habitation and agriculture. The Aztecs prospered and built the marvelous city of Tenochtitlan on a grid of chinampas in the lake of the moon. To control seasonal flooding and drought, they built an enormous dike of stone and wood spanning 10 miles across the lake. Keeping out the salty waters of the north, the dike created a freshwater lagoon in the southern half of the lake of the moon. The Chinampa zone was thus a gigantic hydraulic scheme manipulating fresh and salt waters through periods of drought and flood. At the time of the Aztec Empire, the Chinampas, supplemented by the yields of surrounding farms, hunting and fishing, supported an estimated valley population of two million people. How was this highly productive agricultural system sustainable for 2,000 years? The key to the proper functioning of the Chinampas was water management. The canals of the Chinampas enabled drainage of the spongy wetland soil during the rainy season and thus reclamation of the land. During the dry season, water could infiltrate each Chinampa from the canals and the porous Chinampa soil received a continuous supply of water. Irrigation was needed only during periods of drought. With this abundant and self-regulating supply of water and rich soil, the Chinampa zone was a self-sufficient economy until well into the 20th century. An average family landholding of one half an acre provided a multitude of crops, building materials, animal products, fish and waterfowl, with ample surplus for market. Chinampas were constructed in two ways. In marshy areas, Ditches were dug around rectangular pieces of land, piling the mud on top to create the chinampas. In shallow lakes, the building of a chinampa required seven steps. First, using a long pole, a suitable base for a chinampa was located in shallow water. Wherever possible, the remains of an old chinampa, called a cimiento, were used. Second, strong reeds were stuck in the bottom marking the dimensions of the base. Most chinampas were about 300 feet long and 30 feet wide. Third, mud was dug from around it and piled on top of the reeds and the cimiento. Fourth, mats of water vegetation were cut and towed to the new chinampa. Fifth, a compost heap was created by layering the mats of vegetation on top of each other until there was a thick cap of vegetation. Sixth, mud from the bottom of the lake was mixed with soil from an old chinampa and placed on top, reaching a height of about one foot above the water level. A porous base, rich in organic matter, was thus created through which water easily flowed. Lastly, the sides were secured with woven reeds, and then willow trees, Salix pomplandiana, were planted around the edges. Willows planted hundreds of years ago can still be seen in the Chinampa zone that survives today, on the southern edge of Mexico City. The willow roots grow very fast and deep, so they don't compete with crops for soil nutrients, nor interfere with cultivation. 
And because they have a very narrow shape, they don't shade crops either. But they do provide protection from frost and wind, as well as nesting sites for birds and other pest predators. In addition, the willows are the community's major source of construction materials and firewood.